those who have <clears throat> been watching the videos of my X Max and everything I've done to it from the light kit to uh, breaking the right suspension, shock shaft, and uh, lower A arm. Uh, I ended up getting some performance parts in, some Robinson Racing uh, uh, Mod 1 16 tooth and 18 tooth gears. Uh, in the first one, I had a major brain fart. And this is the stock gear. It's aluminum. And as you, I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. It may be steel, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. Uh, but it, when you compare it against the Robinson Racing, you can definitely tell that the stock gear came out of a mold and then they just machined it. But the Robinson Racing, you can definitely tell that it is 100% machined, especially the teeth. The teeth are a lot, uh, I really don't know how to describe it. The cut and the teeth are a lot more precise than on, on this. I mean, on one side, they're extremely rounded. On the other, they're completely square. But on the Robinson Racing, they're square on both sides. Well, this is the 16 tooth that I put in in the last video. If you are going to put the 18 tooth in, a couple things I want to go ahead and warn. Definitely uh, preload your springs. Uh, even at a rolling start, you're still going to have willies if you jam the throttle all the way down. Because I had GPS, I had a speedometer GPS on it. Uh, and at about between 10 and 20 miles per hour it would still pull willies I don't know what I, I would think that putting a larger spur would reduce the torque but it did exactly the opposite more power is available basically what they what tracks this advertised on the box in the videos and everything if you put an 18 tooth spur and a 2028 uh castle fan over your motor the highest temperature i saw was 124 and i was outside what what's the temperature about 50. look on your phone real quick just so we can i can give them an ambient air temperature 50 degrees Okay, so 50 degrees, the highest temperature I saw was 123, and you have to remember, with a brushless motor, if you are to take it apart, you have a rotor in the center, which has the magnets on it. It's completely backwards of a brush motor. Uh, instead of the wires being on the armature inside of the motor, uh, the armature is actually where the magnets are, instead of the magnets being on the case or can. Uh, but with a brushless motor, you have the wires on the can, and the armature has the magnets on it. So all the heat is going to build up on the can, and that's why this thing has such a large heat shield on I mean a heat sink on it. If you put the Castle 2028 fan on it, it's going to pull all that excess heat away. I will admit the stock fans aren't the greatest. I'm upgrading mine to uh, some fans that run at 14,000 RPM. They're just 30 by 30 millimeter fans, 7.5 millimeters tall. Uh, but this thing has become everything I wanted and more. At top speed, I have trouble controlling it on asphalt. Uh, I don't have many places in my particular area. I live in a uh, a pretty big uh, housing complex with cookie cutter houses. So I don't have a lot of room. So I was just running it up and down the uh, straightaways in my complex. There was no controlling it once it got up to top speed. Uh, it, it was just... But the extra power that it gave was insane. Uh, I can't really, I can't put it into words unless you do it yourself. I, that That's how much extra power, it makes it quieter. I mean, even my fiance, she, uh, she could even hear a difference. It, it was quieter. 
uh, <clears throat> like I said, the temperature, highest I saw for about 15 to 20 minutes of bashing, I don't even know what the voltage on my batteries are at the moment, but of running it full throttle, back and forth, just seeing what I could do, how hot I could get the motor. The highest I got was 124, and I did about probably a good 10, 15 passes at full throttle. So this motor is built to be geared up. You have to put a fan on it though, because you have to get the excess heat away from the heat sink and the motor, because if you don't, you're going to overheat. I know a lot, I have a, a fan coming tomorrow that I'm going to put over the ESC. Uh, I'm getting all together uh, four 14,000 RPM fans, uh, two to put next to the ESC to get all the heat away from it, and two to put in the Castle 2028 shroud. <clears throat> to get all the extra heat away from it because we all know With electricity, especially when you gear something up your biggest enemy is heat But I know brushless motors Are rated at about 180 degrees And this is a 1600 kV motor But you would not need to go above 18 tooth Going above 18, going above 18 tooth would make this thing uncontrollable. It is that fast. And I am not joking. I will put up a video now that I've done up the 18 tooth swap. It's not hard at all. There's four bolts on the bottom that holds the whole motor in place. You undo those. You place the pins in the eyes the letter I because it's an 1854 setup I'm eventually gonna go to an 1848 setup and see I mean that that's gonna make it even faster that's gonna reduce the spur by 16th and then I might go back to the 16 tooth I don't know I'm going to see as as things progress I'm going to see but honestly 18 tooth 1854 on 6s this is more than what tracks this. I mean, a, a lot of people have been bashing, saying, oh, I'm not going to get an X-Max for this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason. I haven't had a single problem with my X-Max. Not one. Except, I ran it into a tree. I went through a narrow passageway. There were trees on both sides. I was coming back. Uh, I, had T I don't like TSM, I will say that. The TSM was on. It went a little sideways, it corrected itself, and it went into a tree. Breaking. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the shock shafts. Well, the shock shafts are pretty meaty, but... If it gets hit hard enough, anything is going to break. And you have to remember, these are carbon steel shafts that are chrome-coated. So... Uh, carbon steel is going to break because it's a very hard steel. It's not meant to bend, it's meant to break. But if you call Traxxas, especially within the first, usually about three months of having your vehicle, if something goes wrong, they'll send you the parts out for free. Yes, it's UPS Mail Innovations and you don't get a tracking update for about 60 hours. But I had my parts within five days. So, just, it, it, it absolutely turns into a rocket. Not only acceleration, I mean, I, I scuffed the hell out of my body because it, it flipped. I, I'm having to learn how to drive it because there's so much more power. And I'll just get into the under, get into the actual inside. Let me see the camera so I can show. You can't see the gear because it's covered by the, uh, spur cover but under here is the 18 tooth with the 54 spur but then the down in here where that plastic is where those four bolts are it reduces and that's where it uh the gear goes to the drive shaft so it's sort of like a double reduction drive um as you can see here's the castle motor i mean yeah it's warm uh, 
but not too hot to touch. I mean, I'm putting my finger right up against the heat sink. Uh, it, it moves plenty of air. The, the castle fan, you don't even need to use zip ties. Just press it down in place or slide it in from the back when you put the 18 because when you put the 18 on, it slides it all the, all the way over to the, uh, well, in America, the passenger side, but the right side of the vehicle. My plugs. I changed to XT60 because that's my plug of choice. I haven't had a single problem with those. And, yes, they do look like shit. I know that, but they work. And that's all that matters to me because I'm putting a cover on this and nobody's going to see this. And here's my Futaba. The only problem I did have was it was so damn fast that... My two front LEDs, those two right there, it was so fast that it broke those two loose, and I am not lying. You can ask my fiance, she saw it. Uh, but just to show you that it does have the, there's 16. There's the stock 15. So, and anybody who saw my last videos, the only other gear I had was an 18. So that's what's in there right now. Uh, as you can see, I am scuffed up. When I first got my uh, my shock towers are a little scuffed up. When I first got it, I was just testing the spur gear and seeing it. It definitely needs to be tightened when you first get it. Uh, differentials need to be filled. Uh, I it says ten thousand weight in the front, and thirty thousand in the rear. But I put fifty thousand all the way around because it sort of gives it positive traction, but at the same time. You get plenty of... It, it still turns on a dime. <clears throat> you can see how much my springs are preloaded. I mean, the rear ones are preloaded almost all the way. The front ones, I'm trying to leave a little damp. So, when it goes over bumps, it can take them. Without possibly snapping a shaft. I mean, these, these shafts are pretty damn thick. I would say 5 millimeter shafts. Uh, but, it's, I was amazed, and like I said, I'm running 6S in this, that's all I'm going to run in this, I don't see a point of running 4S, cause, hell, if I wanted to go slower, I'll, uh, re-gear it and just put the 15 back in, but, that's a little update to the entire review of how my X Max is going. How an X Max is going. A lot of people complain about their shocks leaking. There's a tiny bit, but it's not an amount that would drain your shocks. It's just enough to keep the the shock shaft lubricated. So. People who say, oh, wow, well, uh, I bought this truck for $900, $800, whatever. I got it for $900 because, hell, I had to buy it in Alabama because that was the only damn place that had one. I live in Georgia. I had to drive to Auburn, Alabama. And they have a 8 point some odd, I think it's 8.7 sales tax. So it was eight twenty five. And Trax is selling it for eight thirty. When they first came out, they were eight hundred. But as the hype's going up, as more people are getting them, the price is going up a little. I don't know. I don't understand why someone would get an E Revo or a T Max or something like that. I have a T Max myself. Uh, the only reason I would go for an E Revo is the cantilever suspension, but. If I'm going to go for that, I'm going to go for the Summit, and that is going to be my next Traxxas vehicle when I can get the money for it. Because that's that's a vehicle that costs about as much as this one, $750. And you have to run, I'm definitely going to change it to a Mamba Monster setup, because I do not like brushed at all. Just too slow. I mean, But you can even tell, looking at the tires, it's, it's starting to round over the, the lugs. And these are the front tires. You would think that the back tires would take most of the beating. So this tire is probably going to go up here. But there's 
little to no play in the entire chassis. You will notice after you get it running for quite a while, it will start squeaking. Don't worry about that. That's just the CV joints. If you worry about it, just squirt the CV joints with some WD-40 or put some marine grease on them. I would prefer marine grease myself because the, uh, marine grease has silicone in it, so it's waterproof. So any water that, anything that may get in the CV joints would get out just by spraying some water on it. And you wouldn't have to worry about rusting. With WD-40, yes, it rusts. Uh, my biggest complaint, I would have to say, is the bumpers. Uh, I've already stripped one side. And it is a little, yeah, it's loose. You can see. Uh, this screw, I ran into a, uh, a street trash can a uh one of those big trash cans that they give for your house i ran into one and it completely ripped this away from the bumper well some jb weld uh making some new threads with some jb weld it worked but it didn't work it didn't really grab so i uh basically took a pair of vice grips and clamped down on this to make it sort of an oval shape and it it worked a little better, but I'm going to have to tighten it up and hell, it's not hard. All you do is put your, the only two wrenches you're ever going to need for this is the two point you have. It comes with everything. A, uh, the 2.5 T wrench, which is the one I'm using at this moment. And a 2.5 ball end wrench. Because some of these screws are a little difficult to get to. And the ball and wrench makes it so you can sort of, like down here, right down in there, you would have a difficult time, damn it, you would have a difficult time getting to that screw right there without a ball and wrench. And then it does come with a 2 millimeter wrench and all that is used for are these screws right here that hold in the shafts, but damn. I don't see why they didn't gear this thing with 18 teeth from the fat. Probably to keep it slow. Because it's easily doing 60 mile an hour now. At least 50. Because I've seen other people. And uh, I didn't keep the GPS on long enough. Because I haven't got complete control of it at top speed yet. I'm having to get the trim set just right. And the reason I know the temperature and everything exactly, uh, I'm using the transmitter that came with my T-Max. And it has the Traxxas Link module already in it. So, I always know the temperature. And the one thing I don't like is the voltage always says 5.9. Basically telling you how many cells you're running on. Six cells. It's not telling you, you your actual voltage. And I'm going to contact Traxxas about that and ask them, okay, what's up with this? I don't even know what my voltage is. I'm having to run with a helicopter voltage meter. So when it gets to about 3.5 volts, it starts making a hell of a racket. So I'll know, okay, it's getting low. I don't want to go below about 3.2. You... I've run Venom Packs down to about 2.8, and they charge right back up fine. Would I do it over and over again? No. It was a, a complete fluke. I was running unmatched batteries, a 40C discharge and a 35C discharge. I put the 35C discharge on the positive side, which is where all the power is actually pulled from. And if you're going to do unmatched batteries, you definitely want to put the lower discharge on the side that has the two black because all the power is mainly being pulled from this battery i mean it's being pulled from both but most is being pulled from this battery but at this time i'm running dual 7500 milliamp hour 30c so 225 amp uh this thing has uh the esc is rated for continuous 80 amp and peak of 300 and my batteries can peak out at 
Uh, on it, it says continuous discharge, 30C, 225 amps. Max burst rating, 50C, 375 amps. So more than enough amps to get this thing up and hauling ass. And the thing that really... I saw videos of people that put 18 gear spurs on this. I mean 18 gear pinions. And while it was rolling, they would give it gas and it would do a wheelie. And I was like, okay, that can't be possible. I mean, it. that's the opposite of what gearing would do. But this motor has so much power. I do know it is a Chinese, uh, from what I've heard, from what I've read, basically Traxxas and Castle had a falling out uh, over this vehicle because Castle wanted to put the 2028 system in it. But Castle didn't want to drop their price. So if you would have got this with the Castle system, you'd be paying $1,200. So they went with this. That's why in time I am going to change out the stock ESC for the Castle XLX. And once Kershaw Designs uh, start shipping out their uh, 2028 uh, motor bracket, I'm going to get that and the 2028 motor. Because that you can set to 3548 and that would just be fucking ridiculous. Especially running on 8S. So you'll have to get two new batteries, 4S, 8000 milliamp hour and they're going to be massive. And you're going to have to somehow modify this to accept such a large battery. But that's, that's it this time. Anytime I do something new, I will keep everyone updated because I know several people, uh, quite a few people are watching the videos. Uh, several people have subscribed to my channel. I do a lot of RC stuff. I got my first RC vehicle three years ago and ever since then it's been nothing but RC. I used to be a musician. Uh, your chance of becoming famous is you're more likely to win fucking lottery. But you can see back there, I have a 18, I mean a 9 string guitar, 9 separate strings. I have guitars all over, I have amps. I still play guitar, I'm still a musician, but RC is where my passion is now. I always wanted to do it as a kid, never had the money, but now I have the ability to do it, so I'm doing it. So, I'm basically living the hobby I always wanted to be part of. So, for those who subscribe, I thank you. And I will keep everyone updated on the X-Max and what's going on with it. If you have any questions on it, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer. Uh, like what chargers, what batteries, where can you get parts. I know all that because I made sure if I needed something, where would I be able to get it. So that was one of the first things I made sure of once I got it. If something fucked up, okay, where do I get the part? So, I'm just going to end there. Oh, wait, I'm just going to... As you can see, the heat sink is still on there. Uh, you do have to clock it to the left a little. And to get the castle fan, especially running an 18 tooth pinion. And it's a little tough getting the shroud on, but you can get it on. And there's no zip ties. As you can see, there are no zip ties. There's the zip tie holes. It holds it so snugly that you don't have to worry about zip ties. Just between the two uh, inner cage frame, it holds it in place because the heat, sh heat shrink is pushing it out and the inner cage is pushing it in it just sandwiches it in place and then the neck the fan i'm getting i'm going to put right above the esc and it's going to pull it out and then once i get the other three in i'm going to take that one put one here put one here and then replace the two fans in here and they're all 14,000 rpm fans that move four to five grams of air uh, I don't know how many CFMs that is. If I had a uh, flow bench, I'd be able to tell you, but I don't have one of those. They're about ten, fifteen thousand dollars. But that's it. Got any questions? 
Hit me in the comment section if you like what you see. Con uh, subscribe, like. Peace.